Greetings YouTube, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Due to the continued success of my Project Zomboid tutorial series, I've returned with another video. Thanks to your feedback, I've decided to address the most common question I get asked. This is a beginner's guide to Project Zomboid. The guide is designed to be a single source of information that will give both new players a solid start and hopefully provide veterans a few tips they may not have known. Specifically, I will be covering things you need to know in the first few days and weeks in the game. This includes finding tools and supplies, working out where and when to set up a base, and of course how to avoid ending up inside a zombie's stomach. So grab a notepad and prepare to learn from a man who's a master of survival games. Seriously, I know what I'm talking about. I think. Tip number one. TV is good for you. Our first tip comes courtesy of new subscriber and fellow Project Zomboid expert, Uncle Varum. He submitted this gem of a tip which even I wasn't aware of. Remember when your parents told you the TV isn't good for you? Well, in the world of Project Zomboid, the TV is a huge source of knowledge. When first starting the game, if you tune in to the Life and Living channel at the times of 0600, 1200, 1800 and 0100, you can watch one of three shows which will passively increase one of your skills. The cooking show will increase your cooking skill. The woodcraft show will increase your carpentry skill. And the exposure survival show will increase your fishing, farming, foraging and survival skills. It's essentially free experience. And the best part is that the experience gain will stack if you read the equivalent skills book or if you have the fast learner trait. Seriously, I can't express the value of taking advantage of this simple trick. I was able to gain two points in my cooking, farming and carpentry skills simply by finding the right book, getting a watch and setting the alarm to the appropriate times. After a few days, I had a massive boost. However, please remember to make sure you're in a safe area before attempting to watch TV and make sure that you set the volume as low as possible so that zombies are not attracted to the sound of the TV. A final tip is that the entertainment channel is also useful. Watching it will give you a bonus to your happiness trait, which can be used to remove the unhappiness Moodle. Tip number two, gear up for success. Project Zomboid boasts a massive array of items, but some of them are more useful than others. In the first days of the game, you will want to know what items to prioritize in order to ensure your short-term survival. When searching the surrounding buildings, you should start by searching cupboards and sinks to find a basic weapon such as a frying pan or a saucepan. They make reliable clubs that can be wielded in one hand. Next, search bedrooms to get something bigger like a baseball bat or a golf club. You can also find a backpack or duffel bag to store your loot. You can equip a bag on your back by right clicking and selecting place on back. And then select a second bag in your secondary hand by right clicking and equipping as secondary. You can equip up to three melee weapons by dragging them onto the hotbar at the bottom of the screen or by holding down the hotkey 1, 2, 3 or 4 and then clicking on the corresponding item in the inventory. Slot 1 is used for equipping large weapons like axes and spears on your back. Slots 2 and 3 are used for equipping small weapons like hammers and knives and slot 4 can be used if you have a holster for a firearm. 
The last thing you will want is clothing to protect you from the elements along with scratches and bites. I recommend a long sleeve shirt to cover your arms, some jeans which are thick and resist scratches, and boots will keep your feet safe. Just don't overdo it as many layers of clothing will cause you to overheat. Tip number three, travel safe, loot safe. Now that you have some weapons to protect yourself, along with some bags to carry your loot, it's time to search the surrounding area to gather more supplies. While exploring, you need to be aware of the undead infesting the surrounding area. Zombies are an ever-present threat. And while you cannot avoid them completely, you should only try and engage in combat on your terms. While moving through town, I highly recommend using the stealth system to move around, something even I don't use enough. Pressing the C button will allow you to crouch. While crouch, you will move slower, but are far less likely to be spotted by the undead, and can more safely move between houses. Remember to keep a wide berth between you and large packs of zombies. Use available cover like fences and buildings to stay out of sight. When selecting a building to loot, it's critical to check each of the windows in order to determine if there's a hoard inside. If the coast is clear, then you can enter via the door if it's unlocked, or by opening one of the windows. Occasionally you will find all doors and windows in a house are locked. You can break the window with a weapon by right clicking on the window and then breaking it. You can also select the remove glass by right clicking on a broken window which will allow you to safely move through the window without injury. This should only be a last resort because removing glass from a window also carries the risk of attracting zombies. Plus you can injure yourself with the broken glass. You can start filling your bag of choice by dragging items into the bag icon in your inventory. Just remember that some items will require a bigger bag. So keep an eye on the bag's weight, which will tell you how close to full it is. Don't get greedy. A final note to remember when entering building is the dreaded alarm. Random buildings have house alarms which will go off when breaching any entrance. If you hear the alarm, you need to get away from the building as fast as possible, preferably by using the sprint or shift key. The alarm has a massive noise level and will attract every zombie in the area. Your death is guaranteed if you remain around when they arrive. Tip number four, Fight Club. Even the most careful player will eventually get spotted by the undead horde. In most cases, especially when facing large hordes of zombies, it is better to retreat. However, when looting houses or clearing the area around your base, you will eventually need to kill some zombies. Remember that zombification can occur from a single scratch or bite so you should be extremely careful when engaging zombies. If you are spotted by a single zombie, you can quickly dispatch them by using the spacebar to push them to the ground and then standing on top of them and finishing them off with a stomp to the head or a strike from your weapon of choice. If you're a beginner, I recommend fighting no more than one zombie at a time. But if you do have to fight more than one, make sure you're armed and slowly back away using your weapon of choice to keep them at a distance. Your choice of weapon should also match the number of foes. With a long range weapon such as a baseball bat or golf club being perfect for fighting larger groups. If you're a player who prefers stealth, you can combine your sneak ability and a bladed weapon like a knife or stake to sneak up behind a zombie for a one-hit kill. Just remember to keep an eye out behind you as zombies can sneak up on you just as easily as you can sneak up on them. 
A final note to remember with combat is to use the environment to your advantage. Zombies can stumble over fences and through windows. This slows them down and gives you a perfect opportunity to finish them off with a one hit kill. Zombies can get lost inside buildings and in the woods so don't be afraid to use these to lose a pursuing horde. And if all else fails don't forget to use your sprint key to put some distance between you and the horde. Tip number 5. All your base are belong to us. Now that you have some experience, some basic weaponry and some bags to transport your loot, you will want to begin searching the surrounding area to determine a location to settle. This is critical as a well-situated base will keep you safe and will be located near all the resources you need to survive in the long term. When deciding on a location, you should consider a home on the edge of town, away from built-up areas home to larger zombie hordes. Another tip is to try and settle near areas where you can find supplies, like supermarkets and warehouses. If you're starting in a coastal area such as West Point, then you should aim to set up as close to the water as possible. Currently zombies are unable to travel through water, meaning hordes can only come from one or two directions. Lakes and rivers also supply an abundant source of food via fishing, and an endless supply of boilable water to drink or to use for a farm. When deciding on what type of building to choose for a base, I always recommend a two-story building, as they allow you to sleep upstairs in relative safety where zombies are less likely to find you. The other advantage of a multi-story building is that with the right tools, you can remove the staircase and access the top floor by using a rope ladder. Zombies won't be able to climb this, and you are as safe as you're going to be in the game. A final note when selecting a base is to try and build near wooded areas as well. Forests provide several vital resources such as wood for construction, sticks and stones for making weapons and tools, and bugs and berries that can be eaten for food in an emergency. Tip number 6. Pimp your crib. Now that you have a base selected, you should be aiming to stock it with vital supplies to ensure your long-term survival. Your first target should be the surrounding houses, which contain kitchens with both perishable and non-perishable food. Non-perishable food can be left for later, but I recommend you have at least a week's worth stocked for when the power fails. You can find containers for storing and boiling water such as saucepans, cooking pots and kettles in kitchens. If you're not living near a water source, I recommend looting at least 10 of these. You can place them outside near your base and they will collect rainwater every time it rains. Bathrooms can be searched for medical supplies such as bandages, needles, threads and disinfectant. If you see these, prioritize them over everything else, as they are rare and injuries in Project Zomboid are just a matter of time. Some houses contain garages where you can find tools. Now tools are heavy, but you do want to prioritize some of them, such as an axe, a saw, a hammer and as many nails as you can carry. These will allow you to cut down trees and use the wood to fortify your home. If you have spare room, try and find a trowel and seeds. You will need these to start a farm. A final note when looting is to note the location of large buildings like restaurants, warehouses and storage units. These are the absolute best place to find large amounts of loot. However, they will almost always be surrounded by zombies, so I don't recommend attempting to breach these without a weapon 
and medical supplies in case you get injured. Tip number seven, preparing for the long haul. If you've followed my tips so far, you should hopefully have at least enough food for a few weeks, some basic medical supplies in case you get hurt, and if you're lucky, some tools for building and farming. It's time to create some basic fortifications for your base. Start by using your axe to cut down some trees and begin collecting logs. You can then right click on the logs with a saw in your inventory and select saw planks. You can then use the planks to block windows by right clicking on a window and selecting barricade with a hammer and nails in your inventory. If you are not able to get your hands on some tools, don't worry because if you live near a forest, you can right click on any area of ground and select forage. You will then begin searching for natural resources that can be used to make makeshift tools. A stone axe can be created from a chipped stone, a tree branch and a ripped sheet. And a stone hammer made from a normal stone, a tree branch and a ripped sheet. You can tear clothes found on dead zombies to make ripped sheets and everything else can be found in the forest. You should be aiming to barricade all windows in your base as a minimum. Eventually you should aim to build a wall around your base so you can safely set up essentials like water collectors, composters and a farm so that you eventually have a self-sustaining base. We'll go more on this subject in a later tutorial. A final note is to check the cars that you find in your travels. Occasionally you can find working vehicles which will provide a massive bonus to your mobility plus a way to carry large amounts of loot. Cars also provide a quick escape route in the event of an emergency so you should aim to have at least one car with a full gas tank and a bag of supplies in the trunk in case you need to make a speedy exit. And that was it for my beginner's guide for Project Zomboid. This is a massive subject that would take many videos to fully cover so I've tried to stick to the basics. I have several other videos on the channel which go into a lot more detail on the various aspects of the game along with some new videos I'm currently working on. So I hope that you'll stick around and I hope that you'll as always forward your questions and comments through. Most of the information here was to try and answer a lot of the burning questions I've gotten from new players, and I hope that you found it useful. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback and comments, and hopefully you'll join me next time when we look at some more Project Zomboid. Until then, Skill Incarnate, out.